Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, any ladies here? By the way? Yes. <laughs> Uh, there's a world to win there. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the interesting thing is that um, you're going to move from an old castle to a modern campus on the Eindhoven University, which is quite a transition. Uh, and we've heard it cannot have been an easy decision to make. But as Benjamin Franklin once said, energy and persistence conquer all things. And you have proved uh, him right again. And you have pro uh, the moving fans, let's be honest, will not be pulling up to the front door until 2015, but we can mark the start of Differ <coughs> today. And I would like to offer you my sincere congratulations on this new beginning, as it is a significant step. And I would like to also uh, congratulate all employees, the staff, with the way that you have been cooperating, the way that it has been done. Uh, because the consequences are big. Your new research, research institute will also be founding a number of university fo uh, focus groups, branch campuses, as you will. Uh, based on the proven model of the successful FOM Institute for Particle Physics, NICAF. The new differ is focused on sustainable energy. It is a challenging issue in scientific research, and Fleischmann and Pons have a lot to say <laughs> on the subject. As you all know, for an entire year, they were in a state of utter euphoria, euphoria with prospects of receiving a Nobel Prize, rich revenues from patents, and above all, the holy grail of a clean and inexhaustible source of energy. Until, on repeating their experiments, they found that at times they came up with the same results, at other times better results, and regretfully, at still other times, no results at all. It seems they have, uh, have been too hasty in drawing the conclusion that they could bring about cold nuclear fusion. How is it possible that such renowned scientists could be so wide off the mark? What went wrong? And it all came down to being human. They were afraid that others would steal their concepts and you see, they had to ask for subsidy to fund their experiments, something we are all common with. And as part of that process, increasing number of people came to know about their experiment, and they were more or less panicking. So they called a press conference. They took the chance and, and, and uh, talked to, to the world about the results that they uh, uh, had seen without giving their colleagues the opportunity to challenge. Leo van Kouwenhoven and his team at the TU Delft did a much better job in announcing the spectacular news on their discovery of the Majorana femin. Um, this didn't, they didn't want to admit definitely, definitively uh, that they had found the Majorana fermion uh, until their paper had been published in a very well-known, reputable scientific journal. Once their paper was published, only last week, as you know, and I don't know if you have seen his attempt to, with Duplo blocks, <laughs> to explain it to the rest of the world. Um, only last week they have made it uh, public. And this shows that a fiasco such as a coal fusion case can easily be avoided, even at the forefront of scientific research. And that is what you are doing here. You are going to focus on warm nuclear fusion, primarily for ITER, and on solar fuels. And solar fuels are a good alternative to biomass fuels, fuels which rely on agricultural crops. They also are a good way to store the energy from the sun. Of course, we can continue to use fossil fuels for the next decades. But the carbon dioxide emission emissions they create only increase our climate problem. In addition, fossil fuels make us dependent on politically unstable regimes. That is why a worldwide search has been launched for sustainable resources. Resources, sources for energy. In the short term, we can achieve a lot through cons conservation and improved technology. Yet, for the long term, we need substantial scientific breakthroughs to come up with the real solutions. And the transition from our current energy sources 
to a new supply of energy presents an enormous challenge that will impact our economy and the job market for decades to come. This transition will require substantial investment on global scale for several decades as well. And these investments will easily equal several uh, percentage points of the GDP of all countries combined. Through scientific research focused on generating, storing and distributing energy, we can lay on a solid, a very solid foundation for the future of our country uh, and actually of the world. We must, of course, also invest in young research talent. And you are doing this through the program called YES, uh, which is Young Energy Scientists, in which young, very promising scientists are given the opportunity to work abroad for a couple of years. They are then working on a challenging energy pro uh, problem. And this will equip them to continue their scientific career along the same path here in our own country. Your institute also is providing us with the linking pin between fundamental science, business and institutes like ECN and TNO. And this puts you in the very heart of the top sector policy and on which I would like to say a couple of words uh, uh, now. I am very glad that we have signed the innovation contracts together uh, on the 2nd of April. It was a milestone that we would not have been able to achieve without the huge efforts of NWO, KNAW and the university researchers. And I'm convinced that the top sectors policy will contribute to strengthening the ties between science and the world of business, because that's what we need. Without compromising, let me state that uh, very clearly, without compromising fundamental research in which you create, uh, as was said before, which you, you create the top sectors for 10, 20, 30 years from now. But it, the top sectors will provide us with a stronger knowledge ecosystem in which fundamental science, application-oriented research and innovation-focused activity can thrive side by side. Through the top sector policy, we are working towards achieving a greater earning capacity for our economy so that we can emerge from the current economic crisis much stronger. <coughs> Being connected to the European research programs and resources is also essential in this effort. At your research in institute, you link fundamental science with solutions to energy problems of the 21st century. It's not a pipeline whim, it's one of the boxes in the square. <laughs> um, one of the grand challenges from the Horizon 2020 program of the European Union and, of course, a top sector on its own. That is what we are speaking of here today. By setting up operations at the Eindhoven University of Technology and by collaborating closely with this institution, you are doing exactly what I expect from fundamental research institutes. Namely, to ensure that the excellence of an institute such as DIFFER trickles through, as it were, to university education. And this will enable top young researchers to move between research institute on one side and academia on the other side more easily. That will give synergy. I've cited your institute in my strategic agenda as a good example of the cooperation between research institutes and universities. And I'm convinced that the cooperation on campus offers greater opportunities for cooperation with the world of business and for the creation of spin-offs and spin-outs. It's not something we only do with DIFFER, it's something we see broader with MWO uh, and other institutes combining their knowledge, combining their research effort with universities. In this case, if we combine, we get a larger uh, uh, amount of research uh, uh, funds and that will make new programs possible and that will bring us to the next level. And this is particularly true for an institute such as DIFFER, which operates in a field that is vitally important 
for the top economic sectors, the energy sector, the impetus behind all motion and activity. Once again, my sincere congratulations. And now there's a red button. It doesn't mean that we're going to nuke the world, <laughs> but we're going to open uh, a differ, which hopefully provides us with a, on the long run, a fantastic new result on energy resources. Um, congratulations, and I have the honor to Thank push you. the button. Yes. yes, as as you saw, there's the don't touch this button, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Yes, it's a conspicuous red button and it's there um, for you to push it and then we'll see what happens. So please go ahead.